And good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner. Live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop, I'm Tim Torrance. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. we got a very special guest with us today, Coach Bob Lovell in. Good morning, Coach. Hey, Tim. How are you? I am wonderful, and we appreciate, as always, you coming down and spending time with us. You know what? The way this works out and has worked out the last few years, this is the uh, last Saturday of my summer hiatus, so I'll be back on the air on Friday. Yeah. And for me, I look forward to this day, number one, to come down and spend time with you and, and all the folks at WORX. And secondly, it, it, in my mind, kind of gets me ready. Okay, this is something now I've got to start preparing for next week. So it's fun to come down. Yeah. Uh, I spent a lot of time down in Madison this year. My grandson uh, completed his freshman year at Hanover oh, wow. on, the, on the lacrosse team. They yeah. had a great season. Mm -hmm. And so my wife and I uh, spent an awful lot of time down here. We loved it, loved every minute of it. Yeah. Uh, they feel like Madison's like an adopted home for us right now. <laughs> You've had a uh, couple of months off during the summer. As Thank you, goodness. As you always do, but now you're getting ready to hit the grind again next Friday night, and and uh, you know you you're like everybody else. You need some time off. Yeah, I think we do. I think um, I, I don't think you can do. I mean, the show's unique. Mm -hmm. uh, those Friday nights and Saturday nights from uh, the middle of August until the end of March, I think you can understand it being in the business. Those are pretty intense nights where you have, you know, a short amount of time to try to talk to a great number of people, and you need to be on top of your game. You need to be really good. You need to be prepared and, and all that because live radio, um, you have no safety net. You, you, as you well know, you've got to do it and do it right. And I think people have an expectation for us and, for, and from me uh, about about a level of what they want to hear and the quality of what they want to hear and I think we've maintained it for a long time but that's not easy to do as you well know and I think um, you know what what it does is it, it does put a lot of pressure on you I wouldn't think any, it's not really work for heaven's sakes right. but uh, to maintain that level and that stability that we've had for so long it's not an easy thing to do and so I think everyone understands I'm getting older um, I don't know how many more years I'll be able to do the show I hope a lot uh, a long time but um, yeah you, you always need to rejuvenate uh, especially as we get older we need to rejuvenate ourselves more and I think it's pretty well chronicled I've had some heart issues in the last few years and so uh, you know everything's good but you need to maintain that as best as you can you uh, starting your 25th season is Season 25. Wow. Oh, man. Yeah, thanks for bringing that up. Yeah, wow. It's, uh, you know, we were talking before we went on the air about the passion of what you do to do it for as long as you do, and obviously the passion is there. I think it is. I mean, I, I recognize that I'm very lucky to be able to do what I do. Uh, I, I recognize that um, I got a chance 25 years ago to do something that was unique. We had no idea what was going to happen, obviously. But I think the, I look at what's what's happened to me professionally, what's happened to me personally since I've been on the radio. Uh, it's been fantastic. Uh, it's a great way uh, to, to spend a weekend for me. Um, the show has been very successful. I think the show matters to a great number of people. Uh, it certainly matters to me. It matters to WORX and its listenership and, and others around the station, around the state. But um, yeah, I mean that passion is still there. I still get excited on Friday and Saturday nights, and still look forward to going in the studio. When you when you uh, when you decided you were going to do this 25 years ago. It, was it something of, of of reservation with you on I don't know what's going to happen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, I didn't have a job. <laughs> I, mean, I, I I had stepped down. No, seriously, I I had walked away from a 21-year career as a basketball coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I was at, at IUPUI at the time. I was 43 years old. Uh, we were making the transition from NCAA Division Two, uh, from the NAI to Division Two, and then ultimately to Division One. And you know that that's a tough business. It's a tough transition. I knew that it was going to be very, very difficult for us to do. And so uh, my wife and daughter had been on me for a number of years to stop and walk away because I was developing some, uh, some health issues at the time. And so when I walked away, I didn't have a job. And so when Scott Eaker, who was the news and sports director of Network Indiana at the time, came to me with this idea, he was my play-by-play -play guy at IUPUI, mm -hmm. said he had an idea for a radio show. Well, I mean, it, it, it was an idea, Tim. You right. understand people have a lot of ideas. Some make it, some don't. Right. But... Um, it, it, it sounded to me 
like something interesting, and it allowed me to still be involved in, in athletics, mm -hmm. something I'd done since I was a kid. Right. And so, uh, yeah, why not? It's brand new. I think I like the challenge of starting something differently. Uh, I wanted the challenge to still be in athletics and still f figure out if we could connect and do some things, and fortunately, we've been able to do that. 25 years ago, the technology had not advanced <laughs> to where we're at right now. And you I'm not sure we had technology <laughs> 25 no. years ago. And then you essentially had to rely on the old good, good old-fashioned hard-line phone calls to get information. Absolutely. And, and now we've progressed to click of a button, look of a phone. Well, you know, you can, you can appreciate this. Um, you know, we're, we, we had in the studio, my first producer, studio producer, is a guy named Russ Maloney. And behind him, behind the, the buttons and the board and all that would be a, a whiteboard with five lines. He would draw five lines. And, and, and so the phone would ring. He'd write Tim Torrance, <laughs> line one. We had line one, two, three, four, and five. Uh -huh. Tim Torrance, WRX, Madison beats uh, Charlestown, and that's that. That would so he and, and yeah. when you would drop, he'd erase that and put somebody else there. <laughs> so that's exactly how we did it. Okay, and so when when you remember the old Morant's tape deck. Oh, absolutely. So when you would do interviews with people, you would you know you'd have to hit the button correctly to stop it, and you'd right. have to edit all that. And well, that's that's how we did it. And and the other part of it too is that when we were when we to, would get guests on the show, we would send them a fax. I'm not even sure if anyone has a fax machine anymore uh, or you'd make a phone call right. and then when we were trying to expand the number of stations we would do a demo tape literally a cassette tape demo tape you probably got got you might even have it back at the uh, yeah. at the studio you'd mail those out and you'd say here's my fax number fax me back with some information if you want to be on the show sure. well that's that's how we did all that back then and um, listen I'm the least technologically minded human being you know <laughs> but you have to keep paying with it and our business uh, and we joked about it earlier it's a multi-dimensional type business it's a multi-platform business so all you're doing is old-time terrestrial radio that's hard to do and if you have to keep pace so it's been kind of interesting to see the changes and I think that more importantly for us is that we've managed to withstand those changes and we've adapted and we've continued on because at our core we're going to bring you what happened on Friday and Saturday night. Yeah. I mean, that, that hasn't changed. That part of what we do hasn't changed, and I hope it never changes because we do it pretty well. It, let's go back, and, and if, if you're like me, I remember not a whole lot from the past, but some <laughs> things I do pick up on, and there's special instances in the past that I can remember. You remember that first show you did with Indiana Sports Talk? Yes. Do you remember walking out of the building and thinking, Hmm. Might have something, or ooh, got a lot of work to do. Uh, got a lot of work to do. Yeah, got a lot of work to do. Yeah, you can, you know, you think about this. We uh, we put this thing together without a demo tape, mm -hmm. uh, which is astounding to me looking back. <laughs> Secondly, um, at the time, we were asking listeners to call us. I mean, the the kind the original concept was we wanted to have kind of a, a, a statewide post game show where media coaches and fans would call in after the games and kind of a unifying show for everybody around the state you know in theory that sounds that's sure. wonderful that sounds great but then so we I'm given this 800 number right hey call me 800 and and no one's calling I mean it, nothing as you understand nothing is worse than to have and we were on from nine until midnight right and so three hours of uh, here's our number, call us, here's our number, call us, and, and, and literally no one called, right? And then the phone calls we did get happened to be from a certain, a certain town mm -hmm. and at a certain bar. Yeah. And so at, by the time people are calling me, listen, seriously, they were, they were pretty well into the night, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. And, uh, and so the first night, Tim, I, I could not master the phone system. Mm -hmm. You understand, sure. you know, as you're there. So but for people who don't, you have a bank of, of uh, phone lines, and the lights will, 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 hit, will be lighting up. And you have to hit a button and hit it a certain way. And then you have to hit another button to, to drop the call. Right. Well, almost every, we maybe had a half a dozen calls at, at most. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't disconnect. And so going over the air was, 
if you'd like to make a call, please hang up and dial. You know, that recorded <laughs> right. message. And that was going out. That's my, that's my first night. Now, you know, I get back in the office on Monday with Scott Eaker, and we you know, kind of do an after-action report, so to speak. I think people like to call it right now. Yeah. And, and he goes, um, it's okay. It, it was not the night we wanted. Uh, and, and my hand to God, over half of – we had eight stations carry the show that first night. Five of them called Scott on Monday and said, hey, I th in, in effect, basically saying, I thought you said this thing was going to be good. <laughs> And the guy can't even get in and out of commercials. The guy can't even keep, but he can't get in, use the phone system. If this doesn't get better in a hurry, mm -hmm. we're going to drop it and go back to what we were doing. Right. And so, you know, oh yeah, I remember that first <laughs> night. I remember it very vividly. But you know what happens? I mean, you you draw on your experience. I mean, I'm sure. a coach. So yeah. what do you do when you get beat that first game? You go back onto the practice floor. Yeah. You start focusing on your fundamentals, and you try to get better. And and I, I, fortunately, I think we got a little bit better and a little bit better and a little bit better and I think we're at a point now we're pretty good but that first yeah. night was no I did not drive home I had a 45 minute drive and that was a very long drive thinking what in the world have I gotten myself into <laughs> you didn't have any broadcasting experience none. zero before you started none none at all <laughs> so you really went into oh, it with listen um I was incredibly naive. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Scott was overly optimistic, um, but I think he'll tell you that he he just felt something about the concept and felt something mm -hmm. about me. Now, yeah, my experience in media had been talking to uh, uh, newspapers and radio sure. after games. Sure, that was the extent of my media. Right. But um, I think after, I mean, everybody, I think everybody knows right now I can talk. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm a, but I think the other part of it, too, is I'm a teacher. I'm used to being in front of people. I feel comfortable talking. I feel comfortable uh, on a lot of subjects, um, not intimidated by the fact that I have a lot of time to fill because I still teach. I still right. teach a couple classes at IUPUI. So, you know, the concept of being in front of people trying to talk about information and, and, and statistics and things like that is something I do every day. You, uh, you get through that. That first night and, <laughs> and, and, and you make it through it and, and and you come back the next time and then the next time and then the next time and at some point in time I'm sure things started to and I don't want to say fall into place but that that rhythm mm -hmm. got better it, it did and I, I tell you, it was noticeable for us because um, when we start to make the transition from that first football season to mm -hmm. basketball so you know middle of October end of October you know to go back I'm sending out all those tapes and all yeah. those faxes and no one's returning my call I mean I'm, I'm not getting any yeah. it was it was really really frustrating that first year because no one would respond and then so, literally like a, a switch goes off that middle part of October I start to get call after call after call from radio stations and it was basically this message hey what do we have to do to be a part of that network mm -hmm. we need to be a network Indiana affiliate sure. and so you know we expanded the Network Indiana affiliate base dramatically. So, you know, think about this from the start of football in August of 1994 to the start of basketball in 1994, we went from eight stations to 16. Mm -hmm. So, when we flipped the switch to start basketball uh, in November of 1994, we have 16 radio stations. And then we stayed on the air through the summer as we are now. Right. Uh, we were on the air, and then, then at the, you know, be the end of July, the phone starts to ring again and I don't know why we were stuck on increments of eight but at the at the start of the football season in 1995 we had 24 stations mm -hmm. and it was just astounding to me right. because in that first year as you well know no one wants to advertise on your show mm -hmm. they say well who are your advertisers and you go well mm, we don't really well come back when you have some and so that's the conundrum how can right. I come back when I have some if no one's willing to give us a chance right. to begin sure but when you walk in with eight stations as a as an affiliate list as opposed to 24 mm -hmm. yeah 24 now you've got somebody's attention so we not only added stations we added revenue and we start that second year and we all believe hey this is really something it exceeded our expectations beyond our wildest dreams in that first year to sure. be able to do what we did yeah and now 25 years later you're at the point where you're at right now and it's i would say just from how i've 
seen you and talked to you and listened to you. It's a it's a comfort zone now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's yeah, a comfort yeah, zone. It, yeah, it's yeah. it's kind of like business as usual on a Friday and Saturday. Yeah, but you know the cool thing about it is, and I don't think, I don't think people realize it. I never have an idea who's going to call. Sure. I have no idea. Sure. On Friday night and Saturday night, I just come in thinking. You know, I, somebody's got to call. Right. Uh, how many? I don't know. How often? I don't know. When? I don't know. Um, and that tension, mm -hmm. because there is tension. Because right. I've got look, as you well know, when they flip the switch at 9:30, it's me until midnight. Right. And and you know, there's no place to hide. You got to go. There's nothing you can do. <laughs> you got to right. be able to do it. Yep. And so it, I, I like that tension. Mm -hmm. it, it, it it's in some ways it's kind of like coaching. You had an idea. You had a game plan. Right. You thought you were ready. You mm -hmm. thought you knew what you were doing. But when they toss it up on that first tip. You know, from there, you're, you're winging it, and you're doing what you can do. Right. And so we've been able, I think after all these years, I think people, you talk about rhythm, mm -hmm. I think people understand rhythm. Coaches yeah. understand it. You've called a number of times. Media people understand how this is. And um, we average during the football season about 22 or 23 phone calls, and we average about 20 during basketball. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, some nights you'll have, uh, there are nights when literally I'll get 30 phone calls. Sure. And there'll be nights where I get 15. Right. So I have no idea. I don't know why. I, I couldn't tell you, but it's sure. one of the reasons why I think it makes it so much fun for me is that yeah. I never really know until it happens. Coach, you, you, we, we kind of talked about technology a little bit, but you guys, and I, I, myself and my broadcast partner, Travis Calvert, we're, we're guilty of scrolling Twitter during games to mm -hmm. find scores. Right. But you guys have kind of incorporated technology with what you guys do as well. Well, I think you have to, Tim, or, or you know, it's that situation where if you don't, you're going to got to be around right. much longer. You know, when we started Indiana Sports Talk, one of the main things we did was to collect scores. Mm -hmm. So affiliates like WORX would call us and say, okay, here are the scores from games around our area. Mm -hmm. it was, and, and we were the leader. We were, the, we were out in sure. front of that. Right. Uh, television stations in Indianapolis would all call us and say, hey, can you give us the scores? That's where they were getting their scores. They sure. were getting them from us. And certainly at the time, we were we were the place, if you wanted to know what a score was in high school football or basketball, that's where you went. Well, you know, things have changed. You know, Now you can get updates. You get live updates uh, on various platforms watching a football or a basketball game. What hasn't changed for us is that you know, we, uh, we have those conversations and we have those scores. Uh, we've added, obviously, our own social media component with Facebook and with Twitter, and and um, we, we try to get that information as fast as we can. But technology has made us kind of redo what we do. But at our core, we haven't changed what we do. We are a uh, we are a satellite-based uh, radio show, mm -hmm. and we are in the information business. And the information that we provide is scores and conversations about games. Uh, we've done it now. This is our 25th year, and I think people like what we do. I think if if we hadn't kept pace in terms of technology, we would not be on the air. Right. I think we would find ourselves being replaced. And that's been one of the biggest challenges is how do you incorporate the radio business, because you and I have heard for years radio is going to die, and 95% of Americans still listen to radio. We're still here, and right. frankly, we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have a mix of the technology of social media and the information that we provide, I don't think you could do the kind of show that we do and do it justice. Well, and, and w w my, I've had that same conversation with folks about radio and the intimate death of radio, and, and my response is always not been, <laughs> if you don't like radio, Radio, then get your money back. Right. Oh, you don't have any money in it? All right. Okay, it's free then. Right. So it, when things are free, they tend not to go away a lot well, of time. Well, you know what? I, I look at this uh, from from my standpoint. Um, yeah, I, I host a radio show, but I'm in the content delivery business. Mm -hmm. uh, I happen right now to be doing it via radio and video streaming, uh, audio streaming, whatever, uh, you know, different ways. But, sure. but at, at the end of the night, at midnight, I've, uh, I and the guys who work for us are bringing you information that you couldn't get other places. Uh, you can get parts of that information sure. other places, but in terms of the composite information we give you, we're one of the few sources that has that. And so, 
You know, we've tried to keep pace with the delivery platforms, as people like to say nowadays, but at our core, we are still a radio-based program. And, and I think what makes us unique is the fact that we really do care, and you know this, knowing me, I do care what happens in Madison, Indiana, and I care what happens in Richmond, Indiana, mm -hmm. and in Kokomo, and in Jasper, right. and in Indianapolis, where you know I, I work. Uh, I especially care uh, about small towns because they're the ones, small stations like ORX are what got us started and keep us going. And so I care very much about what happens in places like that around our state. People always ask me, and they'll, or we'll, we'll discuss Indiana Sports Talk, and they'll say, it was like Coach was at the game watching. He, 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 he knew what was going on. He did, you know what? Magic. He, he, he knows how to ask the right question. Yeah, buddy, that's what it is. <laughs> that's right. That's you know right. what? Here's the meaning, and I appreciate that, uh, that, that people feel that way. But I just visualize this. Here's what I get paid to do. I get paid to talk about 20 or 20, 25 games that I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, I have in front of me a score. That's it. Uh, now, with Twitter, um, you, you can get more information. But I, sure. I, I mean, the, the, you can appreciate this. I have five lines that are, that are on hold. Mm -hmm. And so I mean, handling the volume of information that comes in on a night, so, so I, I'm trying to scroll through Twitter. I'm trying to look at those scores. I'm trying to think about something. Talk about multitasking. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's insane, frankly. And so I find myself being more relaxed just saying, hey, you know, coach, Tell me about the game. Right. I don't ask it that way. And I know the more cliched question that I ask is, tell me who played well tonight. Well, there's a reason for me asking that question because, yeah. you, you know, if your fans down here in Madison have a game, big game, coach comes on, and mom and dad and grandma, grandpa, Aunt Millie, Uncle Joe are on their way home, driving home, going home after the game, and they want to hear about their boy, Billy, who caught the winning touchdown, right. that's a big deal. Sure. Okay, that, it, that's an enormous deal. Yeah. And I've always tried to get as many names in as I possibly can. I feel badly if I have a coach on the phone and I don't ask about names. Right. And so, um, you know, on any given Friday night during the football season, there are 150 games or so. Mm -hmm. I mean, a little more than that, like right. 165 games. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm trying to get names because you want to hear about yourself. Sure. And and that's what we try to do, but uh, no, I don't. Listen, I don't have information about the game. No. I, I mean, I have a score. I mean, if it's if it's uh, 13 to 12, well, you know, that's an exciting game. Right. Somebody had to make a play at some point, so you ask. As you well know, you're going to get two, two and a half, maybe three minutes on the show. Sure. So ask two or three questions. And I have this novel approach. I, I may be the only interviewer uh, in radio or television who actually lets the guest talk. <laughs> you know? I mean, seriously. That's right. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I don't get paid by the, by the word. Right. I don't get paid. I mean, what I get paid to do is get information. And so I don't have it. I'll ask you to get So when you yeah. call me, basically, w w you know this, broadcast. I'll let you do a minute and a half, two minute wrap. I won't ask a question. Right. Thanks for calling, Tim. See you later. <laughs> That's right. Now, if a coach calls, I mean, we'll give him a little bit of more time sure. and find out the information. But I, but I think what's important is number one, you want to know how you won. Did you make a play at the end? Did you make this great play? If you did, who made it? Who were the big stars right. of your ball game? How's your team? You know, something like that. That's that's all. That's that's what people want to know. Right. We try to get that and get you in, get you out, because we got people waiting to talk about the next game. That's that's kind of a a an informational side that you probably have learned throughout the course uh -huh. of doing what you do. Yeah. To to get to this point where you're where you ask those questions. Yeah, I think I know how to do it now. Yeah. But I think at the beginning, trying to figure out. Uh, and the other part I think is important is that I don't know anyone who likes to be on hold. I mean, no one, right. to, no one wants to be on hold. As right. you know, right. we have hard breaks. In sure. our business, we, we, we're going to automate your, your commercials and all that from our studio. Mm -hmm. So I have a, I have a six-minute segment at the top of the hour. I have a 10-minute segment, a 10-minute segment, a five-minute segment, and a four-minute segment. And so I don't want you on hold. Right. I, want you to, I, I want you because my feeling is if I have you on hold for 15 or 20 minutes, next week you're not calling me. Sure. Because oh, I don't want to be on hold. This right. guy put me on hold. You know how it is? Yeah. So I'm trying to get you in and out as fast as I can. Now, 
I make the I make media people whole. I try not to make coaches whole. Sure. But that took me a while to figure out how to. Right. I look at this. Um, like an airline traffic controller. Mm -hmm. I got all these guys flying around and you know they're out there and I only have one runway. And so right. I gotta keep okay, you you're next on the runway, get there, get in, get out. Right. So the next one can land and do what you do. And right. it's maybe the bad analogy, but it works for me. That's that's very interesting. You uh, again in twenty five years you you built a great program with Indiana Sports Talk. You're not going to do it forever. Oh, <laughs> really? Come on. I know. I, I, I hate to say that, but Thank you're not going to you. do it forever. Right. But when you wind it down, one, I, I, I feel like that you're probably going to leave thinking you left a pretty good footprint for somebody behind you to come in and, and take over. Um, yeah, I, I really do. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm really proud uh, of what the show has, has done. I'm proud of what it represents. Mm -hmm. um, however long I do it, I will be enormously proud right. of the impact that it's had on, on people. Um, it really does matter to people, and I, and I know it, and I, right. and I appreciate it. Um, I think the other part of it, too, is that um, I'm proudest of the fact that we took a concept, we took an idea, and made it made it what it is. Mm -hmm. This radio show has done so much more for me than I think the the show's done for others. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I look. Um, I'm fortunate. I was just inducted into the Indiana Basketball Hall of Fame in March. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. I've been inducted into the Indiana Sports Writers and Sportscasters Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. I've been inducted into the Plainfield High School Hall of Fame where I went to school. I've been inducted into the IUPUI Athletic Hall of Fame. Four halls of fame mm -hmm. since the, the since the show started. Right. Well, those things don't happen without this show. Uh, and, and I also, you know, it never grows old of being somewhere and someone hears me say something and go, hey, I've heard that voice before. Yep. Aren't you Bob Lowe? Well, yes, I am. Yeah. And I love listening to your show. That never grows old. Mm -hmm. I think the legacy of the show, whether I stop tomorrow or whether I stop 10 years from now, mm -hmm. is that it's a, it's a tradition now, it's an institution. On Friday nights and Saturday nights, when you went to a game and you get in your car, mm -hmm. you expect to hear Indiana Sports Talk. And fortunately, you've been able to hear my voice for the last 24 years. There, there will be a point where I don't do it. I think that's fairly obvious. Sure. I just don't know when that is. Yeah. Um, I think about it, uh, especially thought about it a couple of years ago when I had heart surgery. Sure. Uh, but I'm right now. Uh, I feel great. I'm excited. Uh, I always get excited about getting back on the air. Right. And and uh, you can understand this. Friday nights and Saturday nights, when they toss it up and go play, you get energized mm -hmm. just by being a part of that. Yeah. And I'm fortunate to be able to sit in that chair and be a part of what's important to our people around our state on a Friday and Saturday night. One of the things I don't I don't recall discussing with you on the on all the times you've been on the program and and. You know, it's beneficial to the affiliates and to the fans and this and that with what you do from the middle of August through the end of March. But it also benefits the IHSAA. They they get a lot of showcasing from your program. Well, yeah, they do. And um, I think they, um, I know they appreciate it. Yeah. Um, Bobby Cox and I are friends. Blake Ress and I were friends. Um, I, you know, I do a weekly interview with Commissioner Cox sure. for the IHSAA. Uh, Champions Radio Network, um, but um, I, you know, as you well know, I don't spend a lot of time on professional sports. Right. Professional sports don't matter to me. Right. Uh, it's not how I make a living. You know, I'm, you know, I, I, at my core, uh, I'm a teacher. I'm a coach. I mean, I happen to be a small college basketball coach. I happen to work as a Division One administrator for seven years with the Horizon League. So. You know, what matters to me are uh, high school and college sports because because I know they make a difference because yeah. I know that it's um, that kids play for the love mm -hmm. coaches coach for the love of the game uh, and, and communities like Madison and like Franklin where I live it matters what our kids do on Friday and Saturday night not just football and basketball you're a volleyball coach and and our daughter was a cheerleader and, and my grandson's a lacrosse player and I know how important those things are yeah. And I want to make sure that what we do on Friday and Saturday nights, you feel that that it's important that, that we don't take any. We I, I care as much about what happens at the smallest high school in our state as I do at a Ben Davis or a Carmel. Sure. As a matter of fact, right. I care more about the smaller school right. because, again, to go back, 
uh, small stations around the state of Indiana made Indiana Sports Talk. Mm -hmm. Small stations and small towns around uh, the state of Indiana are what this state's about. Right. And on Friday and Saturday night, that's where I belong. And and I'll keep doing it as long as I can. Right. You uh, you, you mentioned, you know, the, the, the small towns and the small high schools and the colleges and Speaking of colleges, you've you've kind of been down this way a little bit more because of I'm a Panther now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> that, I didn't realize that until you told me. Our grandson Jackson Wheeler uh, played a he's a he just completed his freshman year at Hanover College. Yeah. He's on the lacrosse team. He had a record-breaking season. Sure. And uh, Jack played quite a bit. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I I like to think he played a, an important role. Uh, he loves it. Mm -hmm. Played slam to Kai. Got involved in the uh, campus-wide wiffle ball tournament. Oh I thought yeah. Was the coolest That's thing going. That's great. And so uh, my wife and I and our daughter and son-in-law spent uh, plenty of nights and afternoons down here. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, from our house in Franklin, it's about an hour and 20 minute drive mm -hmm. and uh, could not be happier for Jack. Um, he, he's had a wonderful time. And what's ir ironic about it, Tim, is you know I'm a Franklin grad, coached at Franklin, mm -hmm. coached at IUPUI. One of our biggest rivals at Franklin is obviously it's Hanover. You know, yeah. this, this little victory bell right. game that they play every year. Right. And so uh, when my grandson committed and I put something on Facebook, I started to get re calls and responses from a lot of my former Franklin College players going, my, how could you let him do this, this, that, and the other? And so I sat down with my grandson. I said, now that you've made your decision, let me tell you about my relationship with Hanover College. And yeah. I told him about the rivalry. And I said, look, I, I, here's how I look at it. The first championship team I coached at Franklin College won the NAI District 21 championship, went to Kansas City, played in the national tournament. We beat Hanover by one point to win the championship. And I was fortunate to coach four championship teams. Right. My last championship team at, at IUPUI won the District 21 championship in overtime to go to the NC, NAI National tournament guess who we beat in overtime Hanover, Hanover College absolutely <laughs> so we beat John uh, John Collier and one yep. of his better teams we beat Mike Beitzel and one of his better teams mm -hmm. I said look I, I love Hanover I loved everything about it yeah. except when we played them I didn't like him I right. said I think you made a great choice I think you'll flourish as a as a person as a student and as an athlete I think you'll flourish in a place like this in this type of atmosphere and and fortunately he's done that well good absolutely coach our time is up we can't believe it can win so fast. It always does. You know how it is. You you feel I can't stop. You feel two and a half hours on Fridays and Saturdays, and I'm sure they just zip right yeah, along. They do, Tim. It is it is always a pleasure to spend time with you because we are friends. But more importantly, you're what makes radio so so cool for people. As somebody who cares as much as you do, and and it's easy for people to understand. Uh, I don't think people in Madison realize the kind of treasure they have with you and WRX and everything that you do. But so thank you. I'll always uh, always be here. I always look forward to it, and can't thank WRX and you enough for what you do. Our pleasure. We'll we'll see you maybe at uh, a lacrosse game. I hope so. <laughs> That's Coach Bob Lovell on Coach's Corner this morning live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. We'll do it again next Saturday morning. We'll be talking Madison Lady Cubs soccer with the Coach Janet Hurts and some players. That's next Saturday live from McDonald's. Say thanks to Tyson Torrance in studio keeping us on the air. Until next Saturday, I'm Tim Torrance from Coach's Corner live from McDonald's on Works 96.7.